bitches, come on! We gotta get you fit. Leave, 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 leave. Do you know, it was on these playing fields of Yorkshire I spent my formative days. I learnt four R's up here, well, three of them down there at the school. Reading, writing and arithmetic. But the fourth R was up here with the wind blowing off the moors on me. Kicking a funny shaped oval ball around. And usually totally out of puff. I still am. Right, lad. of football, rugby and soccer, but up here in the north, there's a third, and it's the toughest of the lot. <laughs> right, where's that ball? <laughs> oh, get up, lads, we can do better than that. Come on, John, back for your fault, lad, come on. Come on, quickly, too slow, come on, John, up you get. That's it, front rows first, please. Hookers, get your arm underneath your props, that's it, nice. Bind tight, in you go. Right, second rows. Bind tight, loose forward, loose forward. Right, again, Max, same again. No. This is rugby league football. And to get some idea of how it's played, I'd come back to my home patch, the old west riding of Yorkshire. It's at schools like this one in the mining town of Castleford that rugby league stars of the future get their first taste of the game and the urge to yell, Castle for Drews, okay? Get it out! Oh, yes. Rugby League is a spin-off from the original rugby union game with the same basic objective, to score tries. Tries are converted into goals, as in union, by kicking the ball between the two upright posts. But after that, the differences start. For instance, in league, there are only 30 men in a team instead of 15. Teacher John O'Neill explained why. This was designed to open play up. Yeah. Um, originally, they, they did start with 15 men, but um, they gradually reduced them, yeah. I think it was to, to 14, then to 13. Yeah. And there's some talk of now reducing them to 12 and making the game even faster. Yeah. I think, as a spectacle, there's too many bodies on the field and it slows the, slows the game down as a spectacle. Yeah. Some of the tackles are smother tackles. The idea being to stop the man and to stop the ball from going away. Yeah. But of course, in desperate situations, then it's got to be really hard tackled around the ankles if a, a, a back breaks away. Oh, yes. And the full back's got to, they've got that choice. You've got to bring him down, and there's no question he's bigger than him. He can't smother him, he's got to tackle him yeah. firmly. Here's John. Now then, Cathy, what can you do with this gentleman? Uh, yes, you've got him. Nice tackle. Beautiful. Here's the next one then. Line him up, Mick, line him up. Nice tackle. Beautiful tackle. The boys will be galloping now. Nice tackle, Mark. Right round the thighs. Right in there. Come on, harder, harder, harder. That's a steam engine now. There's a load of it, a load of it. Sack him yourself. Hold him, General. Hit him in your sides, John. Oh. That was very good. You didn't tell me about the puddle, did you? And welcome to Alden Road, Castleford for tonight's floodlit BBC Two rugby league match between Castleford, their home team, and Hull Kingston Rovers, the visitors. Most league enthusiasts reckon it's a faster and tougher game than Union, and more entertaining to watch. I joined John Sheridan, one of the Castleford coaches, to see for myself. Ball's a bit greasy, but you know there's a few mistakes. But it's end-to-end yeah. -end stuff, so it's pretty good, really. Number six is good, isn't he? That's yours! Go! I love Jeff! Well, yes, Bruce Burton yeah. is a big money man, is Bruce. Yeah. Paid 8,000 for it. Yeah, well, 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 well,
Oh, they're doing they're, very well. They're good from Halifax. <laughs> I'm from there myself. <laughs> Well, he's the best one that got actually. Yeah, we'll have to see. Around Jeff's the fullback. Make Jeff, sure Jeff. Jeff. He's a yeah. Wakefield lad, isn't yeah. Jeff? Make sure. Came back from Australia and we signed him. He's done very well for us since yeah. as well since he came back. It is Sammy Lloyd. He's the same as Sammy. He came yeah. from Price and Junior, so just down road from here. Yeah. Great player, Malcolm. He was He's Australia. been here as a junior, and then, you know, when we signed him as a professional, then he went to Australia. Yeah. And now he's come back and he's coach and captain here. Yeah. He's giving him a great lead again tonight as well, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> but you can't expect to win without a few casualties. During the second half, forward Peter Cookland collided with someone else's knee. John signalled him off, and we made a substitution. Well, well, what happened? <laughs> I don't know, I just got up here. Yeah, that was it. Did you get kicked in the face? Yeah, I think so. He needed me when he went over there. Yeah. For the I was under the thing and yeah. he just fell on me with me. Who said he was taking over from you? Alan Dickinson, did. Yeah. yeah, number 15. Because you're a heavy tackler, aren't you? Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they say, I yeah. like to get involved. <laughs> <laughs> we had a good game out there. I enjoy it. I always enjoy it. Especially when we win. It's a semi-professional sport. When it began in the 1890s, players in the north worked a six-day week and couldn't afford time off. Their clubs agreed to pay them, and this caused the split with rugby union. Goal kicker Sammy Lloyd, like all the Castleford players, has a full-time job. He's been a collier since he left school, so although he gets paid for playing, training has to be done in his spare time, when he comes off shift. Is this your uh, special way of making a man? Well, yep. I prefer this because you can get a, a really good sight of the ball. And if you'd like to put ball in there, John. Right. Now, it goes up right. Yeah. Yeah. Because when you go back now, you'll have a very good clear sight of, of where your foot's going to come into contact with the ball. Because at one time, I've seen them at a, quite an angle like yeah. that. Yeah, well, 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 these type of kickers always approach the ball and kick it with the toe. But most modern day kickers now kick with the instep. So I've got to get my instep on that. That's right. Aim at which post? Well, as we're taking it from left-hand side of field, if you aim for the right-hand post with a natural curve on the ball, hitting it with the instep, yeah. should swing the ball slightly in between the posts. Keep your fingers crossed. Keep your fingers crossed. How many uh, yards back? About three? Well, about probably four yards. Four, probably right. Four yards, yeah. And then over to the side. Over to the right slightly, over to the left rather slightly, and attack. Right. Oh, wasn't very good, was it? Well, let's have a go with another. It, uh... Right, keep your fingers crossed for the second right. one. <laughs> have another go. Aim for the far post. That's better. Ah! Oh! oh. Did the bar? <laughs> but I did it wrong. I did it with my toe. You, you kicked see? it with your toe. Didn't yeah. You? Yeah. It's, it's harking back to my olden days, is that yeah. talking? Well, it's hard to get out of a set system, isn't yeah. it? I mean, it, all it's a matter of is practice, practice, practice. Tell me, say in a, in a game, when you've, you've got about five minutes to go and it's your kick and your kick can win the game, yeah. what does it feel like? Well, it's, it's pretty tough at the moment because you can get the opposing fans, especially if you're away from home, you can get the opposing fans to be breathing down your neck and uh, they really put the pressure on, but... Most goal kickers today can uh, exclude this from the mind, and as soon as they approach the ball, they know they've got a job to do and they just get yeah. on with it. And when if it goes, it goes, over... it goes, it's great, you're a hero, <laughs> but I'm afraid if you miss, well, <laughs> try again. Right, I'll try again. It's one very bad miss, one and nearly. Let's see what this will do. But not all kicks are as easy as that. How far is that, Sammy? This one? Yeah. 35, 35 yards. It all rests with you. And it's not just the distance. At this angle, the gap between the posts is narrow, so no one would blame Sammy for missing a kick from here. That was a good one. 
While Sammy converts tries, Bruce Burton, who works for a deep freeze company, aims to score them. So does policeman Trevor Briggs, who plays wing three-quarter. For them, the most important thing is to run fast. Bruce and Trevor finished off their sprint training with a five-mile jog around the back lanes of Castleford. In an 80-minute match, they'll cover something like that distance, just running up and down the pitch. How many goals, uh, how many tries have you scored, Trevor, over the years? Uh, 93 in the first team, and I've scored some in the second team, but 93 in the first team. And how many uh, games have you been in? Uh, about 320, all told. All told. This must, must add up to quite a few years, isn't it? Yeah, it's, this is me, uh, 12th, 12th year. I asked Bruce why he'd transferred from my old home team, Halifax. Well, the Halifax had, due to financial reasons, had sold a lot of the players. Yeah. And uh, I was the next in line to go. And, of course, I cast for a bigger club now. A lot better prospects. We're near the end. <laughs> Captain Malcolm Reilly combines rugby league with selling lubricants. His ambition is to take Castleford to Wembley. This means sacrificing every spare moment because he's not just captain, he's also chief coach. After work, he'd arranged a session at the local sports centre, and this was designed not for speed, but push. <laughs> It's the forwards, the six men who make up the scrum, who do most of the shoving. Malcolm plays in the second row himself, so he does his share. The reason we, uh, we do a bit of weight training, basically we do it pre-season, but occasionally through, a, through an every session, like we had two games, we, we played six, uh, in six days we played three games. And so, you know, instead of putting every training session on at the ground, we just come and push a few lightweights and have a sauna bath. And a little swim afterwards. A bit of relaxation. Tomorrow night we're going to start doing some training, at least I'm going to start, the, the lads have been doing it for a long time. Yeah. What's, what do you do? Well, first of all, we do uh, the initial warm-up period, uh, varied exercises, just to make sure you don't pull any muscles when you get, uh, yeah. you know, in, in the full swing of it. We also incorporate a tyre, yeah. uh, which is very interesting, you can have a go at it yourself. It's what a, do you do? <laughs> it's a large tractor tyre. Uh, in the region of about five five feet high, yeah. uh, probably weighs, I'd say, in the region of close to 100 weight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's nice and soft, and, and they sprint at it and naturally physically tackle it to get a bit of aggression and, and timing into their tackling. Good evening, all. Good evening, lads. What are we doing today? We don't want to do too much tonight because we've got to have it. Hectic week behind us, and we've got a uh, pretty important game coming up at the weekend. You know, a few of the players are a bit jaded with the, all the football we've been playing. <laughs> oh, Sam, we did. Has they got a new car, Sam? We wanted to take him in his new car. What about padding? I mean, there's not very much of me when I look around at these lads. Well, some big. of the big lads, they wear shoulder pads oh. inside, the, uh, inside the jersey. Now, you're the fullback, but, uh, don't, don't you? Well, I'm big enough as it is, you see. Oh, you know. <laughs> you're solid, aren't you? <laughs> What about teeth gums? They wear those. One or two of the lambs have lost uh, a pair of teeth. I've lost my front one, so it would. Uh, oh, so you have. Sorry, I didn't notice for a moment. It's your moustache, I think. Oh, thank you. <laughs> a little bit tired. All regular training, like most of the matches, is under floodlights because evenings are the only time when everyone is free. Hey? Just five for starters, five good ones, that's all. <laughs> 
Look at all the counter for. <laughs> Janet needs to your chest, just ten each knee. Five more press ups. Hey. He's a slave driver, isn't he? <laughs> Four knees to your chest, ten times. Oh. Knees together, up to your chest, just ten. Forky, come back, John. You've got him, Sam. That's the way. And hit him. <laughs> come on, hard. Keeping us at it was coaching assistant Johnny Walker, who agrees the pattern of training with Malcolm beforehand. Get on this guy. I can't get hold of it. Read yours. That's your Gordon. Come on, Sam. Come on. Come on, get after it! Come on, sprint! The session lasted exactly an hour. Long enough to stretch everyone, short enough for enthusiasm. Go up him! And there's always something hot waiting for the lads in the club room afterwards. What is it? What are we having? I am bees. I am bees? Oh, steak bees. Mushy bees. My week of training was over, but Malcolm wasn't letting me off that lightly. He'd arranged a special friendly match for the Saturday morning, and he invited Eddie Waring to come and commentate. Are you going to enjoy the game at the weekend, John? <laughs> oh, I'm going to go for that ten. Sorry? Do you think you'll enjoy the game at the weekend? I think so, yes. Uh, what, what's really going to happen? Oh. Well, you can, you'll be playing scrum half in the second team. Oh, yes. And I've been told to tell you that you're not, you're not going to run again the first team. Oh, the lads have ganged up <laughs> against me, have they? <laughs> I don't believe it. But you should be all right because uh, Sam is playing loose forward. If you can slip on that blind side, it's pretty easy. <laughs> <laughs> Do you reckon I'll get hammered on this? No, I think you should be all right. Huh? Just keep your head down. <laughs> I won't look up at all. Have you got a mouth guard? No. You'll need one. Will I? Scrum half. Yeah. Don't look so You're surprised. You're a bit courageous, aren't you? <laughs> What's for that really, fella, you know, if he comes round the pack or something like that? He's fast, isn't he? I've you, seen him. You've seen uh, Casper play. Yeah. Don't go for the up and unders. Why not? Well, if you do, get down quickly when you've caught it, you see. <laughs> well, that's, you'll probably be... Uh, hammered. Yeah. Well, you know, they're, they're nice people. But the trouble is, when they get playing, you see, it's all for serious. So yeah. I, I think you'll find it hard. While Steady made for his commentary position, I went down under the stand to have a quick word with referee Fred Lindop. <laughs> well, uh, if somebody knocks on, which is propelling the ball forward, I usually bring the fingers together above the head in a scrum formation like yeah. that. So when, I, when you see that, you know it's a scrum down. Yeah. Um, if you put the ball in crooked, which some scrum halves do, uh, I would exaggerate the movement into the scrum towards your side and give yeah. a penalty to the non-offending team. Yeah. It'll be a... Uh, the Nooks, no match, we can call them, by the end of the match, possibly. How many warnings did you get before you send people off? Well, if it's a bad foul, mm. uh, if a chap's lost a couple of teeth, uh, you send them off straight away. To the dentist. Castle <laughs> uh... <laughs> had to kick off against Castle for Day, and, of no! course, John Nooks is the man they've all come to see. A lot of Nooks fans here today, they're really cheering for him. Uh, will he last the game out? Only time will tell, quarter of an hour each way. John Noakes, who's playing you in the number him? seven jersey, but taken by Paul Orr, a bit hard tackle. He gets up shaking his head. We've got quite a good side out, actually, of Castleford, with Ray's in the full back position, and Joyner and Johnson, their star centres. Leave him now, that's two, leave him! John Noakes is lively at the moment. He's, he's still got uh, some persistence about going into the match. It's a pretty hard deal for him to come against these fellows because some of them were weighing about uh, 14, 15 stone. Let's come down. Fred Lindop in charge. International referee, first time he'll referee the match like this, except I suppose in the Halcyon days. No, this side, come this side. That's right. Ron Castle for the team now, they've not got Mal really in. A good fly pass, a bit like rugby union pass, mind you. But it's gone to Morrison, it's the first try of the match. And the goal kick. Everything you've ever taught me, Sammy, is this. By John Noakes, the creator of the try. 
And he's got a lot of fun here in Castleford. Five points to nil for Castleford. Eight. On side, six. He's, uh, as they say, working hard, industrious. But he, he really throws himself, throws himself on the ground after the passes. And by doing so, of course, takes himself out of the game, but he has to get up again very quickly. Malcolm watched from the touchline, hardly believing that Noakes' nomads were actually in the lead against the might of the Castleford first team. Come on, Sonny, I'm right. He's still coming back and he's making the tackle. He's, uh, he went from his shoulders and he went down to his uh, knees, but he got his man. And he's covered it well, so he's got his second win direct. I put it on the floor this time, scum up. Not in the air, put it on the floor. Square it in. John Noakes, I wonder if John Noakes has got the idea that's been thrown in his own forward speed. I'm sure Hartley will, because anyway, they've got the ball. And again, a, a, a rugby union type pass, throwing himself out, fully, fully fledged. I don't know whether he learned to play rugby league here or rugby union, but he's holding on at the moment. He's not losing any impetus at all, and he's had one or two hard tackles, and he's made one or two hard tackles. He's on his jolly. Hartley. To the hooker, to the centre guard, but down it in for a try, John Keir. So at half time, we were leading 10 points to nil. But John Sheridan was still worried. Well, let's have you all sat down then to start with. Right, lads, we're not doing so bad first half. Good 10 points, that. Dennis, how's this scrum going? Are we? Yeah, we just we're getting plenty of ball, but we seem to be shoving round a little bit. Can we, can we bring him to home side a bit? Am more? I putting it in late? Because I'm just about to put it in and all the legs are up and you all fall over. <laughs> just seem to be labouring a bit and it's coming in, you know, and we, that's why we strike, you know, if you put it in there a bit quicker, yeah. you know, it's uh, with more chance, you know. Yeah, right, I'll try that next time. I had a nasty feeling that this was when the first team would start putting on the pressure. And they did. But Bruce wasn't the only one who could produce a surprise try. No. No, it's his victory. And let him, he's going to, is he going to make it? Is he he's going to give in? He's got it first, and the, the no stamps go back. They jump around, and he put them into the lead. 13 points to 11. And Dennis Hartley gives him a friendly pat. Glad he didn't give it too hard, but... Going a long way out to keep that goal. <laughs> and Fred Lindop says, get a bit nearer, lad. Good advice by the referee. It's going to be not an easy kick. <laughs> the ball's getting heavy. The score, 13 points to 11. It, looks as if, uh, it might be on the last try, and there's a try into the corner. The captain, which is John Joyner. So there it is. It's going backwards and forwards. The race, one point here, one point there, 14 to 13. But it obviously the space is lowering now. And uh, John Noakes, I bet, was glad when he throws the gets the right, last blow of the whistle to close the match. Come on, Derek, go. <laughs> That's how I feel. Get in those four if you get in. in. The fact was, I was knackered, and there were still five minutes to play. Hey, I have some funny scrum rules. And it's Sammy Lloyd with his two steps to the left, and then a kick, and uh, it's a flag to have a very good goal to make it 19 points to 13, and there's the end. And so Castleford, 19 points at uh, first team, 13 to 18. And what can we say about John Noakes? Well, he stayed to the end, he stayed in the pace, he got to go, he got to try. But I bet that path is going to be solace to him.